number 527. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you, the author of life you put to death. But God raised you from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I'm writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not, alone, not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please keep in your prayers the repose of the soul and the, the family of Vernal Calmness. Uh, Vernal passed away uh, yesterday, I believe, and uh, not sure on funeral arrangements yet. Um, uh, there we welcome with us here tonight the prom court and uh, uh, other prom goers who are here as well we're glad to have you with us uh, thank you for being here um, tonight so many people are going through a tough time right now and maybe you're one of those 
people. Some of those sufferings that we go through are brought on by difficulties in our world or circumstances of life, and some are um, health-related, right? Some sufferings we just bring on ourselves as well. Regardless of where our suffering originates from, the scriptures are one of the first places that people search for understanding and answers. In general, we don't like to suffer. I mean, let's face it, we prefer living in good times than in times of want. So when we're going through something that is tough to handle and causing us turmoil, the Christian looks for understanding in the light of Jesus. The whole idea of suffering and a loving God can be confusing. I mean, just imagine how much more so it was to the disciples. They wanted to understand what the role of the Messiah, the Savior, in scriptures would be. But Jesus kept bringing up to them that he had to suffer and then die, and he would rise again. They were confused because they were seeing everything Jesus did and taught through the lens of political power. To their way of thinking, the Messiah was going to be a conquering hero, leading a powerful army from heaven. Read through that lens, in the light of power and majesty, the things Jesus was saying were not making any sense. Jesus didn't come to earth as a conquering king. He came in humility, as a baby born in a manger. And Jesus was not born into a rich, powerful family. He was a political refugee, having to flee into Egypt to escape the jealous King Herod. Jesus tried to teach the people to read the Messiah's role through a different lens, not the lens of power, but that of humility, especially the humility that flows from undergoing sufferings. But they couldn't do it. The disciples needed to experience the ultimate teaching tool, and that is actually witnessing the suffering and death of their teacher and master, Jesus. They needed to witness Jesus' passion before they would be able to understand that the Messiah's glory could only come through his suffering. Suffering is difficult to understand for everyone. And all of us suffer from something. And hopefully we can see that God is working through the pain we're going through to bring about a greater beauty within us. There's a story that's told of a grandfather and a grandmother who were in a gift shop looking for something to give to their granddaughter for her birthday. And suddenly the grandmother spotted a beautiful teacup on a shelf. Look at this lovely cup, she says to her husband. And he picked it up and he turned it around in his hands and he said, you're right. This is one of the loveliest cups I've ever seen. And at that point, something rather remarkable happened because the teacup began to talk to the grandparents. It said, thank you for the compliment, but... I wasn't always considered to be so beautiful. Once I was just an ugly, soggy lump of clay. But then one day a woman threw me on a spinning wheel and she started spinning me around and round until I got dizzy and I couldn't see straight. Stop, I cried out. But the woman said, not yet. Then she started to poke me and stretch me and it hurt all over. Stop, I cried. But the lady said, not yet. Well, then she handed me to this man who put me into a furnace where it got hotter and hotter until I couldn't stand the heat. Stop, I cried out. But the man said, mm, you're not quite ready yet. After I cooled down, the lady began to paint me. And the fumes were so bad it made me feel sick. Stop, 
I cried out. She said, I'm not quite done with you yet. And finally, I was put on this shelf next to a mirror. And when I looked at myself in the mirror, I was amazed. I couldn't believe what I saw. I was no longer soggy, dirty. I was beautiful. And it was then that I realized that what I went through made me beautiful. When we go through suffering, whether it be physical, emotional, spiritually, it helps us understand things that we didn't see before, like exactly how precious and beautiful we all are. Jesus' disciples were only open to growth after seeing their teacher and master, Jesus, undergo his passion. They learned that through his hurt, something far better flowed from it, eternal salvation. When we unite our trials and our tribulations to the passion of Christ, we're led to a beautiful place of hope. Our good shepherd, Jesus, leads us through the dark valleys, the tears, the uncertainty. If we're humble enough to let him lead and follow him. As our divine physician, Jesus gives us his healing grace. If we're open to receiving it. As our savior, Jesus wants us to know that he is holding our souls close to him always, if we let him. The worst sufferings are those times in our lives when we suffer alone, when we turn away from Jesus and suffer in hopelessness. It's a suffering that drags us down. When we're not rooted in moving toward the beautiful, like the teacup moved from a lump of clay to a beautiful cup. Then we're moving toward isolation and defeat. And I see this especially happen when people compare themselves to others. It's a no-win activity that only brings to fruition stinking thinking. People look at social media, like Facebook, and think that other people have these perfect lives, perfect relationships, perfect families, perfect jobs. Everything about everybody else is perfect. Or so it seems. When we look at a post on Facebook, we only see a snapshot, one special moment in someone else's life. Now contrast that to when we look at ourselves and see the big picture, the worst in us, the negative stuff. Science tells us that we have about 70,000 thoughts a day and that most of these are negative. So we'll always come up short compared to a snapshot picture of a special moment in someone else's life. And that's when envy and jealousy and frustration begin to creep in. Why can't my family be more like them? Why can't I take a vacation like they do? Why can't I afford a cabin up north? See, it's a no-win thinking. If we're going to compare ourselves to anyone, we should only compare ourselves today to who we were yesterday. Am I better today than who I was yesterday? Am I a better version of myself rather than trying to be better than others? I think these are important readings this weekend because they show us that the only way to finding a level of peace in all the things that go on in our life, especially in the sufferings we go through, the 
The only peace is going to be found in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus showed us that suffering is not the final word. Resurrection is. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray that our hearts may burn with zeal as we listen to God's word, so that we may open our hearts to the needs of all, both in the church and in our community. For the church, welcoming the risen Christ in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. For all church members who feel isolated or lonely, and for all who seek to proclaim the good news of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the many places where there is conflict, for open hearts to aid nations where there is hunger, poverty, and disease, and for the sick and the safety of those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the volunteers who serve in our parish, especially the musicians and choir members, our sacristan, sacristans and lectors, and all our extraordinary Eucharistic ministers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of all parishioners, for the repose of the souls of all the deceased parish members, for the intentions written in our parish book of prayer, for those on our parish prayer list, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intention of this Mass, the repose of the soul of Ed Lehman, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the young people who will be enjoying prom this evening for their safety and for a fun evening, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O loving God, and let your people exult in the new life you give us this Easter season so that we who now rejoice to be your adopted children may look forward with certain hope to the day of resurrection through Christ our Lord. 
And let us offer our prayer for vocations. You can find it on the cards in the pews. Heavenly Father, bless your church with an abundance of holy and zealous priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters. Give those you have called to the married state and those you have chosen to live as single persons in the world the special graces that their lives require. Form us all in the likeness of your Son, so that in him, with him, and through him, we may love you more deeply and serve you more faithfully, always and everywhere. With Mary, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is in the Gather Hymnal, number 542. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of his name. Good, good of all of us. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. 
By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is in the Missalette, number 352.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. As I mentioned, this is uh, prom night, and so we welcome our young people who uh, will be uh, attending prom tonight, and I would ask if uh, all those who are going, if you would please stand for a prayer and blessing. Lord, bless the young people who are attending prom this evening. Keep them safe in your loving hands. Protect them from any intent or thought that doesn't begin with you. Give them the grace to make decisions that glorify your name. May they be role models that show honor to you in all that they say, in how they act, and in how they treat one another. May they be able to look back on this evening many years from now with fond memories of the good times that they enjoyed. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand for the prayer and blessing. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May God who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our hymn for closing is in the Missalette, number 237. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, 
thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. John the Baptist, pray for us.